Welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vayner Chuck, and this, my friends, is The Thunder Show, AKA the internet's most passionate wine program. Be careful there, Mont, with the hat. Looking good, man. We are all tricked out uh, here. There's a lot of stuff on the table, and uh, I'm impressed. It looks pretty. You can definitely tell that I had absolutely nothing to do with the setup today. Uh, we have a lovely guest today. Why don't you tell the Vayner Nation who you are and what all this is? I'm very excited to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Sure. My name is Adeline Rem. I own chocbite.com where you get to design your very own chocolate bar. You choose from dark chocolate, milk chocolate, white chocolate, and then you get to choose a variety of toppings so that you have your chocolate the way you like it. Personalized. Exactly. Customized. Exactly. Very 2010. Yes. The future of retail is I want to own it the way I want to have it. So how did you get there? How did chalkbite.com happen? Well, I, um, I was losing weight. I quit smoking three years ago, had put on 50 pounds. And by, quit, by quitting smoking? Yes. It was, that's a big thing, right, for people? Like that's why a lot of people don't want to quit smoking? Exactly. You, you eat a lot more and mm -hmm. your metabolism slows down mm -hmm. and it was awful. I got kind of chubby. So. <laughs> just being honest. Hey, keep it real. So um, if I was very good all day and didn't eat too many calories, I would treat myself to one little square of chocolate, which is about 50 calories. And I got a little bit obsessed with chocolate. So I'd go to Whole Foods and stand there. There'd be two, three hundred different choices. But I thought, I want it the way I want it. One day I wanted dark with pistachios and cranberries. One day I wanted a spicy with milk. And that's what happened. So you scratched your own itch. I did. I thought if I want it that way. Well, then the whole world must want it that of way. Of course. Yeah, of course. And I love chocolate. I'm a complete foodie. I love wine. And so it was a great fit. And it all just started rolling. And thank goodness, I right when this happened, late last year, someone gave me a copy of your book. Thank goodness someone gave me a copy of your book. And um, that's really what made it all happen for me. So that's I'm awesome. so utterly grateful to you. Well, that's massively kind. I didn't know that part of the story, and I appreciate it. Um, so for me, I, I, I've been wanting to do a real serious chocolate and wine show. Um, a lot of people have wine with chocolate. It is a, it's, it's a substantially big trend right now in wine more and more. Chocolate consumption is getting more and more this style, more upscale, more you know serious. And, and the two married together so, so well. So I love what we did here. K. Murph picked one, sparkling wine, which I think is a great, great alternative with, with chocolate. Dennis downstairs, Bullock, who I adore, went with the Tanat, which is you know late harvest from Uruguay, which is always, always a great, great, you know, Banyul, Tanat, late harvest dessert style, goes great. And then you went with a Brunello. Yes. And a, a lot of people don't recognize this, but non-dessert, non-sparkling dessert, red wines go tremendously well with chocolate. Um, and so I think we have a pretty sweet setup to taste along. So what, I told you to pick three chocolates to pair with uh, the wines. Tell us about the three chocolates first. Well, um, I picked a white chocolate that has marshmallows, butterscotch, toffee, um, a very sweet confection type chocolate. Um, my white chocolate is very vanilla and creamy. And so that was one of the choices. How popular is white chocolate? Because white chocolate is my favorite type of chocolate. How is that? I feel like it's not as big as the other chocolates, right? Well, um, I sell about, I was shocked that so many people buy white chocolates because I thought everybody was going to go for the higher percentage dark mm -hmm. chocolates because. For the health reasons? Yeah, the health mm -hmm. reasons, antioxidants. And right, but you found so out that people press. just, you know, eat what they want, they yeah. care less. And, yeah. yeah, it's amazing. So we, we do about 25% sales. How yeah, much? Yeah, in white, and then about 25% in dark, and the other 50% is all milk. Milk. People love milk chocolate. Yeah, they Mont, love are it. you a chocolate guy? I love milk chocolate. You're a milk chocolate Just guy. plain old milk chocolate. And nothing else? Yeah, I'm not a big white fan. And you hate the dark? No, I think It's too bitter for you. It's not that it's too bitter. You're a sweet guy. Sweet guy. Yeah. And how about for you? You're, you're across the board? I actually, like me with wine? I love all of my chocolates. So there are white chocolates that I really I dislike. No, but right. there are white chocolates that are too waxy. Okay. And they don't have a good... Um, so outside milk. of yours. Outside taking of you mine, outside of your bubble. I like 50 to 60% dark chocolate. And then the rest is... The higher stuff is a little bit too bitter for mm -hmm, me. Mm -hmm. And um, the milk I like, the white I like better than the milk, personally. Got it, got it. Okay, good. So... Um, 
so go ahead. So you did the the, the, the sweet, and we're, we're going to do that with the sparkling wine? Yes. And then the spicy? This is spicy. It has um, wasabi peas on it, which most people really can't think of eating a wasabi you pea see with chocolate. Face. Yeah. It's so good. It's crunchy. It adds a little spice. Then okay. we have the jalapeno salt, which is savory, mm -hmm. and a little bit of cayenne. And the crunch with the smooth chocolate, with the dark, just absolutely fabulous. Okay, and then? Here we have milk chocolate with just a little bit of lemon salt and a little bit of sea salt. And that's double salted, and that's the way we go. That's and we go. all your packaging I see comes with a bite mark out of it. Yes. That's your little marketing signature play? Yes, that's I why like it's that. called Chalk Bite. Does anybody ever feel a little bit upset? I kind of feel like I'm getting ripped off and I'm somebody ate a little, you know, I feel Gary, like, that's my profit margin. Well, uh, is that right? <laughs> are you making, are you making, I like this. Now you're excited. So, I'm, I'm, so I'm Jewish. I'm so Jewish. I hear you. Right. So, you're making, so you're making, this is where you make your 3% profit right there? That's right. Brilliant. That's right. Brilliant. Love it. No, I like it. I like the marketing play. And so how much does a customized bar cost. So the base is $7 mm -hmm. and then it depends what toppings you put on but they, they basically work out about $8. $8 and, a and bar. And you ship them? We ship them with ice packs and... This isn't uh, handwritten, is it? This is, because these are my samples. Got it, okay. Yes. And but the, you're based it, out of Austin, Texas. Austin, Texas. And you, how is shipping this in the summer? It's been interesting. Mm -hmm. You've had some melting I issues. I learned a lot of yeah. lessons mm -hmm. about shipping. Good. And I thought, oh, Omaha Steaks does it. Why can't I do it? Right. But the dry ice situation, you can't mm -hmm. do dry ice. It's illegal, you know, because people hurt themselves. And so we had to... So Omaha Steaks does do dry ice? No, they don't. They they use containers like the ones I use now. Got it. I so ordered from them. I ordered from Seas Candies to see what everybody was doing because right. I'd never been in this business before. Sure. So. And so now you've got it down. I've got it but down. But at first you were getting some emails like, hey, love you, but... I got chocolate soup. Yes, and when someone when someone receives a melted chocolate bar and then they twit, get pissed, they twit pick it. That's the problem. You got right. a twit pick of your melted chocolate bar on sure. on the internet. Got it. Very pleasant. Yeah. Yeah, no, I understand. Please I don't do that. Just no, no, do me. it because it's a transparent <laughs> world. But now our packaging is very expensive. It's akin to getting a Tiffany yeah. box. It's uh, insulated packaging. It all matches. And you have to tell me what this is. You just gave me this. I think this is pretty. Phenomenal. I see you rocking it. I love it. This is a chocolate bar iPhone. Does this fix the antenna issue? It my my I'm not having antenna issues. But you also don't have the new one. I do have the oh, new you one. Do have yeah, it's very nice. It's over there. It's over there. Right. But do you sell these? Yes, I sell them online. It's brilliant. And smell it. Smell it. I don't smell chocolate. You don't? No, do you? Oh no. How come <laughs> No. Well, they usually smell sweet when they first come out the packaging. That's interesting. Nope. But that's okay. I mean, it looks awesome. I didn't need the smell. Okay, cool. You know what we're doing as well? Mm. We're going to give a brand new, brand new iPhone away for every every time someone buys a bar and puts Gary V in the comments, so okay. that I know it came as a result of the wine library. Got it. They're going to be entered into a competition. At the end of the month, we're giving a brand new iPhone with the uh, chocolate bar cover. Well, that's very nice. I think the, I think the Maniacs will like that. So they the just iPhone is the new one's amazing. It's so fast, you'll never go back. Ninety-eight percent of my viewership loves Android, so you need to be careful. They're all very really? mad at you right now. Really? They're pissed. I've used the Android. Do you like it? No, I hate it. Me too. And I don't I have ninety eight percent. I was just kidding. Okay. Okay, good. I was like, really? <laughs> All right. Let's get into the wines. Sorry. Let's start with the sparkling wine. Uh, actually, you know that'd be the sweet one. Oh, no, yeah, I want to start with it. Uh, this is the Gloria Ferrer uh, Royal Cuvée two thousand two Brut. All right, and this is a, a domestic sparkling wine. And uh, Gloria Ferrer has been long one of the premium sparkling wine producers in uh, in California. Uh, Matt, did you get the zoom in? All right, so 20 bones, 91 points, wine news. So let's first snippy snip it up and do the wine thing, then we'll go into the pairing, all right? I'm not gonna spit, do you mind? No, nobody, no guest ever spits. Okay. Which allows them to then make fun of me for being too girly and spitting, which they enjoy quite a bit. 98% <laughs> of them think I'm a girl. All right, so let's give a snippy sniff. You like the 98%. Yeah, I'm just staying to the theme. What, what do you think of the nose? I think it smells really light. Yes, but uh, you know, champagne's not going to overbear you on the nose, especially if you're a Brunello gal. Yeah, um, I'm a red wine girl, so. So, are you getting, there's almost like a marzipan kind, do you know marzipan oh, really? fruit? Yeah. yeah, kind of thing going on on the nose that I like. It's also quite perfumey and very floral, uh, and it's got a little sweetness on the nose. I kind of like the nose. I, I think it's kind of fresh and, and fruity, and it smells pretty good. Mm. You're not a fan of the nose. Mm -mm. Too light. Yeah. Yeah, good. I like really dirty, earthy, sticky red wines. I so respect it. I'm, All right, I'm, I'm let's, going let's try it. it. Let's try it. Trust your own palate. Mm. 
So what do you think? Mary Champagne. I, I did not make it. I have, <laughs> I, I, have, I have no attachment to this wine whatsoever. Call it like you see it. It's like very light balsamic vinegar. Okay. And so you don't like it? I do not like it at all. <laughs> you seem like you're tearing up, right? It's awful. This, this wine is hurting your feelings. Woo! You don't like champagne. That's tough. It's okay. And do you like any champagne? No, I don't. No. Sorry. I can, I, see, I I can see it. You know. No, it's fine. It's your own palate. Um, so to me, this is a, a really solid sparkling wine. I, 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 on the other hand, if I had to give up all wines and only had one style of wine, I would drink sparkling wine over red wine or white wine. Probably right now, push comes to shove, red wine is my third favorite category. Slightly ahead of rosé, definitely behind white, and staggeringly behind sparkling wine. So here's what you see. I mean, this is what's so great about wine. You know, and pro chocolate, and food, and anything else. You have very different palates. For all this light vinegar, I hate it, awful, you know, reaction here, here for me, you know, this is actually an inspiring effort from California because sparkling wines from the U.S. are normally underwhelming. I think it's a little too sugarified. I get a little too much sugar on, on the palate, and so I think the wine news overscores it by giving it a 91. But to me, this is a solid 88 point sparkling wine. I like the fruit. I like the golden apple, like that yellow apple flavor on the mid palate of this wine, followed up by like some white flower, acacia flower styled, and then just a little too much kind of almost like a mochi almost a little too sugary on the finish for me. However, if you don't like sparkling wine and you know, it's, I can see the, you know, if you're red wine driven, it's definitely gonna be under complex, I get that. Um, but a lot of sparkling wines, not this one, for me are oftentimes dramatically more complex than, um, than red wines. It just comes down to palate. I kinda like it, just a little too sugary. You did say on another show that your palate changes as time goes Absolutely. on. Absolutely. But is it an age thing or is it, uh, is it wisdom? Is it because of mind or is it physical? Why I, does it happen? I think it's weather. I think it's DNA. I think it's mindset. I think it's... Branding? No, I don't think it's branding. You don't think it's branding? Okay. I, don't, I mean, it could be. Yeah, listen, I, I think branding is very important, but I don't think, I, I don't feel massively a sway. I, if Robert Parker or Wine Spectator give things, everything 100 points, I'm not like, I mean, I'm, I'm past branding. It used to be branding for sure. I think it's, um, I think it's styles. I think if you ate white chocolate every day, white chocolate's my favorite. I think if I ate white chocolate every day for three years, there would come a time where the high bitter, you know, dark chocolate would probably appeal to me. You know, it's kind of like, I guarantee every person, little side question of the day, is there ever been a food or a beverage that you ate or drank so much that it jumped, literally jumped the shark to the point where you couldn't even eat or drink it again? As a matter of fact, last not, night. Not including tequila, because everyone's had that situation happen, right? The tequila. Or Southern Comfort. Um, <laughs> yesterday was the first time I ate sushi in like 45 days, because I ate sushi for like nine out of 14 days in the early summer. And yesterday was the first day I could eat sushi in like two months. And there was a period in my life where I used to eat, I used to come home from school, grab a tomato, slice it in half, put a little salt and eat it every day. It was my favorite little food literally for 16 months. Between sophomore and junior year, so much so that on the last day of that kind of period, I couldn't do it anymore and didn't eat tomatoes at all. Did not eat a tomato for over two years. Wow. So I think I push things to the extreme. It's a little bit of a personality thing. So I think that's what happens to me with wine, where I'll fall into something, I'll drink it a lot, and then it'll become overbearing. Um, but it goes in patterns. I mean, a long portion of this show, for two or three years, I killed all the fruit bombs, the big wines, and now I'm starting to come back to them a little bit. Not for you, you haven't had those extremes with food? I have, yes, yeah. I have had what it. That's why I wondered why my taste, I mean, my taste really came from you know, the red wine situation mm -hmm. happened. My father, mm -hmm. when I was growing up, mm -hmm. he became very wealthy. Mm -hmm. And so he'd go to these auctions and buy about pallets Bordeaux. of very old, very mm -hmm. delicious. And I was 13, 14 years old and I was drinking these really big wines. And I feel like um, there's an ignorance to other wines because I was... I that had, was your cocoon. Yes. Yeah. Well, let's see if we like it a little bit more with the white chocolate. Let's pair it. All right. All right. So bite the white chocolate first and then have yes. a sip of it. Okay. There you go. Thank you. All right, and one more time, this is marshmallows. Toffee. Ma, let's zoomy zoom on this little beautiful white chocolate. Butterscotch. Mm-hmm. And so is this a popular combo? Mm-hmm. Mm. I have a chocolate tasting in a box, and you get six different ones, so mm -hmm. you get to try a salty one, a sweet one, a fruity one, and these are the, my customer's favorites, basically. Mm-hmm. Mm. 
I mean, white chocolate with poop on top of it, I think I'd like. <laughs> we don't offer that as a topping. No? no sorry. <laughs> Not yet. Huge mistake. <laughs> you have sheep up. I'm kidding. Right every time. Okay. Get the vanilla from it. It's very... Big time. Yeah. Very, very creamy. Mm-hmm. I wanted the melting point to be lower for the chocolate. Some of them are very waxy and they, they don't melt very easily in your mouth. I wanted this to be creamy and melt. So that's, you know, another reason why your packaging of shipping has to be really tight, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So this is the one thing I've always loved about chocolate with champagne. I've done the white chocolate sparkling wine thing quite a bit because it is my favorite chocolate. It, it brings, the chocolate is so thick and covers your palate, it brings enormous weight to the actual beverage. That's really good together. Did you feel like the... Wow. So you hated it for its thinness, I feel. Wow. Do you feel the difference of like... It's rich. The wine becomes... It almost like wow. taking water and then giving it the body of what Chardonnay does. And I think that for palates like yours, for me, I feel it. And it's like a nice little jump up. Like, ooh, I like it. But for somebody who doesn't like sparkling wine or white wine because of its thinness and really, you know, adores that thick, viscous play of a red wine, this is where chocolate really becomes a good partner and can add a lot of weight. This is a really nice combo. I mean, to me, you know, I like both components. I mean, I think chocolate's very delicious. Congratulations. Um, Thank you. <laughs> I, uh, I, I think it's pretty good. What do you think? I love it together, actually. But is that mainly because you still taste the chocolate? Because that is the dominant flavor. I think, but I think it just adds, like you said, the richness to it. And it, for me, it took some acidity away from It does. Palate, so. I think you're right. Let me rinse this. Maybe because it coats your mouth and then Absolutely. As it's going As there's through. like, you know, the fats and the butters and oh, what have Don't you. throw my Brunello no, away. Don't worry. <laughs> sorry, sorry. All right. Now we're going to the red wine. What are we going to do with the red wine? We're going to do the, uh, the, the salty or spicy? I was thinking spicy. Okay. Because right. I thought that we'd do the sweets with the salty. What do you think? Is that good? I idea? think that's what I would have done. Okay. I just was asking the okay. chocolate pro. La Garella, uh, 2004, which is a monumental vintage in Brunello, probably the most hyped since 97, maybe 01 uh, Brunello. This wine rolls in at 39 US dollars, 93 points. Antonio Galoni, who does the reviewing now for Robert Parker's Wine Advocate. And if you're following Galoni, you know that that's a very high score. He's dramatically the most conservative critic now on the Parker board. So 39 bones, um, 93 <laughs> points, Brunello. Let's give it a sniffy sniff. Okay. So you grew up drinking a lot of Bordeaux. Heaven, yes. When you were 13, 14. Yes. Which is brilliant. 15, yep. 16, And where was this? Where did you grow up? Bath, England. Got it. My family are Iranian Jews. Mm -hmm. They emigrated in the 60s. Half of them went to England, half of them came to America. Got it. And so... Yeah, that's and so you grew up in the UK? In Bath. And, and then when did you come to the US? I came, I was back and forth quite a lot, and then about 13 years ago I moved here, so. became an American citizen, mm -hmm. very proud American. Mm -hmm. I love it here, great country. And have you been in Austin the whole time? I, I started off in Los Angeles because my family's in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. big community over yep. there. Right, um, huge. And then I got to Austin as fast as I could, as they say in Texas. <laughs> yeah, you loved it? Yes. Good, yeah, it's a Austin's great city. Just, I mean, I'm you've a been huge there. fan, huge fan. They're a fan of yours, too, you know. A, I love Austin. Um, so, right off the bat, you get a you get a cedar kind of woody component on the nose. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm not really talking to them, actually, but you're more than welcome to listen. Um, there's a cedar kind of oaky component coming through. The wood's a little much for my palate on the nose. I hope it settles down on the, uh, on the palate. There's also a cinnamon component and a little bit of a cranberry play, and also gets a little creamy because of the oak on the back end. I, I, it's really woody to me. It smells like a cedar yeah, box. Yeah, definitely woody. You know? I'm trying to smell the cinnamon. So yeah, the cinnamon, I'm picking up right kind of, if you put it into context, maybe like in between the second and third quarter, like right before the middle of the nose. Yeah, between the second and third quarter. All right, so we're gonna go. It's interesting, when you say it, I can, Pick it up? Yeah. I, I think the power of innuendo is tough. This is something I think about all the top time with wine. You know, the power of like people saying it and they're like, yeah, yeah, you know, I, I wonder what the brain's doing there. Um, but I definitely smell it. That's why I wondered because, you know, everyone's talking about how chocolate, you have to do the high percentage chocolate. That's why I wondered if it's branding. Yeah. If people are buying no, it because I, they think it's better for you. At the end of the day, chocolate is chocolate. It's sweet. It's got sugar. It's got fat. It's fun. It's delicious. It's a luxury. It's enjoyable. But to sit there and say, you know, you got to buy the high percent of chocolate because it's good for you, that's, I think that's pushing it a little bit. I mean, that's our culture, right? I mean, there's been a report of every fruit and vegetable being good and or bad for you in the last 20 years, that's right? True. Like cucumbers are going to save your life. 17 <laughs> minutes later, cucumbers will make you blind. I mean, like, you know, I, I, think that, I think that that's just our culture, right? There's a lot, you know, 
as you get older and you start recognizing what goes on be, behind some of these reports, you start getting quite cynical. I, I think the fact of the matter is this, balance is the game, right? I mean, you know, I think that people need to eat and balance across the board. When I hear people saying they don't have any salt intake or no sugar intake, I'm, you know, it's tough because I hate to say, well, how did they do it in the old days? Mainly because their life expectancy was so much lower. <laughs> so I, I the, hate the portions. The portions were lower. Well, the portions were dramatic. I mean, that's, you, well, that's the why portions, I portioned this. So that there you go. That's why me. this is out, right? No, no, this. Pe- no, no. I have portions <laughs> no, I know. on Six, the box, right? Yeah. So you can have one piece, which is fifty calories, so that you know how much you're eating. You know, you don't need to eat if you buy well, the good that's stuff. That's also an American thing. I mean, when you travel outside the U.S., I mean, you go order a Coke in most European countries, yes. and it's like half the size of this. You order Coke. In McDonald's in the U.S., it's like the size of this Jets bucket. I mean, we we are a big, <laughs> you know, we want our our. The, I mean, everything. I mean, luckily I've traveled a whole whole bunch. I mean, cars. I mean, you don't see cars like this anywhere else. I mean, their cars are so tiny in most parts of Europe and different parts of the world. We're a big culture. We like big things. It's just the way it is, and I, I understand that. We're abundant. We are. We absolutely are. I mean, the U.S. is out of control with that, and that's fine. And so, anyway, let's uh, let's focus on this Brunello. Um, let's give it a whirl. I never thought in a million years I'd be sitting here with Gary Vaynerchuk having a glass of Brunello. It's good, Can right? Can you imagine? They're not jealous. They don't like me that much. Yeah, they love you. No, no. We all love you. So, what do you think of this? It's delicious. You love it? Why do I love it so much? Well, because red wine is delicious. I mean, you know, please don't misunderstand red wine being in third place for me. It's because it was in first place for so long. I think, you know, back to that thesis I had. The sour cherry on this wine is over the top. Like, pure, real, like, if you ever had real cherry juice, like, not... You know, squeezed from cherries, pure, like on a farm. If you go to a farm and have real cherry juice, that's what this tastes like because you have that sour component. It's like, it's almost like, in context of what most people have out there, it's like iced tea. There's a big difference between ordering iced tea at a fine restaurant where it's unsweetened and getting iced tea at like, you know, the fountain where it sweetens. And that's where I taste here. A really pure, authentic, sour cherry juice is, is the dominant flavor profile. I also like a little bit of the wood chunks. That, you know, it's kind of woody, but not over oaked. What are you picking up? What Anything? happens at the end? That's what I love. That last thing that happens. The tannins. The tannins. Yeah, the bitterness on this wine is I what you love. love. It. I love it. Do you it. love salty chocolate? I do. Like hot, a little more than sweet chocolate. Yes, I put salt on apples. I put salt well, on so watermelon. That's, so that's what makes sense to me. Like that's ah. on that same theory is what's happening. You you, you, so you like savory. So you like it too, then? If you put salt Huge. on your tomatoes, then. Huge. Okay. I mean, I would. I love, I mean, sea salt is literally maybe my favorite thing on earth. Like, way up. Thanks there. for telling me. I could have chosen so I, well, I'm, it's a I good didn't thing want, I chose I that. I, I, you know, <laughs> you I, can influence the choice of chocolate you get to eat. That's the whole point of Chalk Bite. <laughs> I, like, I like the customization. All right, let's taste the chocolate. May I have some on mine? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, okay, so we're doing spicy, right? Wow. Okay. That is so I'm going to do the good. one with the bite in it. Okay. So. You know, I spent half of yesterday in your store and, and today, and it is so beautiful here. Thank you. I don't know people who watch the show, if you realize it's this gorgeous, gorgeous building. It is like a library, and the staff are amazing. There's so many choices. The gourmet section is unbelievable. I could just spend a week in there. And the staff are fantastic. Everybody's very, I mean, New Jersey's amazing. We've been here for uh, three or four days. We went to North Shore. We've done everything. We've done fancy. We've done rough. We've, mm-hmm. It's been. Have really you hit a lot of accounts? Tons. Yeah. And how's that going? Well. Excellent. Good. So, this is delightful. I mean, to me, the spiciness on here is the wasabi is tremendous. Mm-hmm. How many different um, toppings can somebody pick from? You like that? Mm. How many different topics? There are over 90. Which you have 90? You, yeah, billions of combinations. We actually have... What is the math? of Tart the, cherry. You were talking about the cherry. Do you have it? Yeah, we have tart cherry. Do you actually know the actual number it, of, re, of true combinations that you guys can I make? I did work it out one time, yes. You don't recall from top it of your It was billions. But is I it billions with 90? It was billions. Yeah. Wouldn't it be 90 times That's 90 why I know it's difficult to win the lottery because it's only six. But all the different combinations with six. I watched a documentary yesterday about the lottery. Oh, did you? It's called Lucky. It's an hour and 30 minutes. If you love documentaries as much as I do, you have to watch it. It is very interesting. The lotto is an interesting thing. This isn't too spicy for you? 
No, I can go real spicy, but I will say this. Mm -hmm. It's freaking spicy. <laughs> I mean, this is pretty darn spicy. <laughs> this is not bull crap spicy. This is, thank you, Ma. Uh, this is spicy, right? I didn't know how spicy you could go, so I bought, this is a sriracha piece. Sriracha is a delicious, delicious hot sauce. Anyway, I, you put it in fast soups in Vietnamese restaurants, and so is I- Is it spicier than that? Yeah. And I was going to make one with you with this, but then I thought it might be too spicy, so I was worried. Is it like one too many or it's ten more? Have two. Two? Um, it's, you it's, really want me to get it's spiced out? It's a pea out. with sriracha around it instead of the wasabi around it, but it's so delicious and savory. It's got the tomato Ma, flavor. Ma, it's blinking. The, What's going to happen? After we finish up here, we'll cut. We're going to cut? We All right, I'm just making a note. This is the only second time we've ever had a cut because of battery. Is it no. battery? We've gone over 30 minutes already. I see. We're, that is not as spicy as this. And if it is, oh, really? then maybe I was primed by this. Okay. All right. Okay. We can we can switch now, Mott. Will I switch now? Yeah, we'll switch right now. All right, we're back. That was all Mott's fault. I apologize. He takes full blame. All right. So, you know, the combo's great. The spiciness is great. I'm going to talk about the wine real quick. I think, you know, it's weird for me to say. I think Galoni went a little high. I like the Brunello. I think it's a delicious, solid Brunello. But to me, it's more like a 90-point Brunello. I mean, I think it's really, really solid. I, I think it's very well made. For 39 bones... I know that 90 points, $39 to some people doesn't equate, but you know, I think, it's, I think it brings value. Brunello is expensive, but I think 93 is a little high. It didn't blow me away. It doesn't have the depth that I like to see in Brunello's at this price point, or actually slightly higher, but at this rating plateau. But it went extremely well. You know, it, it has the guts to stand up to the spiciness. It, this chocolate easily can overpower 95% of wines, but this had the backbone to stand up to it, which is why it was the proper pairing in my opinion. And that's the one I chose, just so you know. So are you taking <laughs> I made full that credit for that? I'm, I'm taking credit Good. for that. Awesome. All right, <laughs> let's move into probably the most interesting wine of the day. I'm very excited to taste this. Yeah, this is really cool. Let's rinse. I just need you to rinse. Dennis is lovely. Yes, he's the best. Yes. Um, let's rinse. And he's tall. He's very tall. Yes. Um, and so, all right, there we go. And he is the best. All right, so this is from Uruguay. This is a Tanat, which is a very fun grape. Uh, really originated from the uh, Mataron in France. Um, and uh, this is a, a small little producer, Alacon, uh, and this is their Tanat Late Harvest. Rolls in at 23 US dollars. Now, I don't like 23 because that's Michael Jordan's number, so I tend to score <laughs> wines that are $23 a little bit lower. Wow. So let's snippy snip it up. Wow. Now, how ridiculous. Did you smell Ma this? Mott, smell this. Please, you have to smell it. So I w this is where that I wish we had smell-o-vision. I, I wish that was here yet. It smells, it smells like milk chocolate a little yes, bit. Yes, it does. Wow. It smells actually exactly no, what like Count Dracula, Count Cocoa Puffs. Like it smells like chocolate cereal. What's that? Is what it smells like. White, what's that white thing that's not marshmallow, but it's the soft version? You know the... the fluff? Oh, you mean like... The fl yeah, fluff. Right. You mean that's fluff? what it smells like to me. It do it's very, it's very marshmallowy. Wow. You're right. That's why I thought it tasted, smelled like cereal because count. What is it? Count. Count chocula. Yeah, this smells exactly like count chocula. I can't like, wait it, to taste this because I'm like, if it smells like that, what does it taste like? Well, funny you should ask. Let's give it a whirl. <laughs> All right, here it goes. It tastes like Manny Shevitz. <laughs> <laughs> is that what you think it tastes well, like? Wow, that's so funny. Well, is that because it's sweet? It's very sweet. Because it doesn't taste no, like it doesn't like finish. Manny it doesn't it doesn't finish like Manny Shevitz, actually. Okay. It tastes it's like chocolate warm. wine. It's it's like hot cocoa sweet. Absolutely. This is this is hot Lady. chocolate chocolate cocoa wine. Wow. Mm -hmm. That is delicious. How much was it? Twenty three dollars. And what's great about this is it's 16% alcohol, and no. so many of these wines get too alcoholic, and you taste the alcohol, it overpowers that chocolate play that Tanat, when it goes dessert like this, gives you, and it becomes kind of like spiked cocoa. It's like if you made Swiss Miss and shot like a, you know, a liter of, not a liter, a, pint, a half a pint of Smirnoff in there. This, on the other hand, balances the alcohol tremendously well, and this is really one of the better Adelidia, wow. uh, one of the better uh, Alcyon, which is the name of the wine, uh, late harvest tanats I've had. I like this. I like I the way this. I love it. I, I, you have to love it. I love it. Because it's got it. red wine characteristics and chocolate characteristics. And there's no, there's no, you know. No heat. No heat. No, no heat at all. It's kind of like a chocolate muscat. 
Yes, absolutely. That does have similarities it's to that. It's so All good. All right, so let's do this. Wow. Okay, thank you. Let's see how it does. Now, there's two salts here, right? Yes. Lemon salt to give it the tang, and then sea salt to give it the salt. Mmm. Milk. I love salt. You like milk chocolate. Go mm -hmm. for it. Mom, get in there. Thank you. Mm. Took the smaller piece, Mom. Closer. So, Mom, what do you think about, you know, you're more of a traditional, like, just milk chocolate. One of the first times you're ever having it with salt. Mm -hmm. And, be honest, she's she's a strong gal. Yeah, she can, can take it. I can handle it. Don't bulk wrap. No, Mom. Well, the salt doesn't last very long. No. It gets overpowered eventually. Yes. Mm. And then the chocolate takes it. I don't know, on the finish now, I'm getting, I grabbed another piece, I like it. But, but, but the salt is weird for you? It's, yeah. It, it, it's just the first time you've ever had mm -hmm. something like that. And so, do you, are you bothered by it? No, it didn't bother me. Because it was Because it gets overpowered enough? Because it, it's subtle? It wasn't, it wasn't like, like a salted chip or something like that. It was, it was balanced. It sort of opens up my taste buds for me. It wakes them up and then the chocolate goes across. That's what I feel like with the salt. It sort of. Are you finishing with it? Because the last piece I just had, the salt kicks in on the finish. It depends if you put it in down or up, I think, on your mouth. Because the inclusions are on one side of the bar. Got it. So I put I put the salt on my tongue, um, the inclusion side down, and then I eat it, and then I let the, the milk chocolate follow the salt. Mm -hmm. Is there more to give you? Where's the salt bar? Mm. Give, give Malt another piece and try it with the salt down first and finish with salt the milk. Salt on your tongue? Okay. Yes. Uh-huh. Though you might not like that because he was a little bit bothered by his salt a little. No, it's was, it was just different. I, I really think you'd like my dark chocolate. I know you like milk, but my dark chocolate is not bitter. The uh, late harvest to Nat here from Atelidia, um, uh, known as the Alkion, is very, very good. I'm mean, scoring 90 points. It's a tremendous dessert wine, and if you're a chocolate fan and a wine fan, you need to find it. It's probably tough to find, so search for it, Google it up, great stuff, 23 bones, spectacular effort, delicious. That chocolate was sensational. I snuck another piece of the white chocolate. I think the quality of the stuff is great. It's fun to have somebody in the chocolate world on the show. I think chocolate and wine is something people need to really start exploring and, um, and I think it's a combo that people really will find extremely enjoyable. Talk about a great way Dessert is very interesting to me. A lot of people who love wine love fine cuisine, and a great way to end a meal is by having a nice piece of chocolate and continuing to drink your red wine as it opens up. Just a textbook classic way to enjoy these two great, you know, luxuries. And they're they're both very similar to me. Chocolate even more so because you can drink great, great quality. Some of the you know, to buy the most expensive home or the most expensive jet or the most expensive car, or painting, or many other experiences, front row tickets, quite expensive. But to drink world-class wine, because that's what this is. This isn't very good, it's world-class. If your palate loves it or not, or maybe it's a step below, but it's right there. It's like fifth row at like you know Madison Square Garden for the hottest concert, which is gonna cost you thousands. This is costing you $39, similar to chocolate. You can eat the chocolate of the world, or quality chocolate that the you know, is that the best peeps or the people that have the most luxuries for such a smaller price point, I think there's a very interesting category in the world of, of luxuries that are obtainable for the average person. And I think wine, though a little less as the first quotes are now starting to get to 500 to $1,000 a bottle, but clearly chocolate. I love the fact that it's high quality and it allows people to have, you know, it's not inexpensive, you know, seven or eight bucks in comparison to what a Milky Way costs or Hershey Kisses, but no, you know, Luckily, knock on wood, for most people, seven or eight dollars or ten dollars is not going to, you know, kill the bank account. Right. And I think that is probably what I'm most passionate about when it comes to cheese, and wine. The wine's a little up there, and definitely, definitely chocolate. I think it's an amazing opportunity to get a little slice of uh, luxury at a very fair price. Here, here. Why don't you ask the uh, Vayner Nation the question of the day? Any question you like, they will answer it in the comments. My question to you is, what is the most outrageous thing you've ever eaten? Obviously, I'm a complete foodie, so I'm interested to hear in your travels or in America, what is the most outrageous thing you've ever eaten? What's the most outrageous thing you've ever eaten? I ate one of those crickets. Mm. That's, mm -hmm. That was, that, for me, that was very outrageous. It was alive. 
it was dead. Oh, it was dead. It was deep fried, um, and everything tastes good deep fried. So I thought, you know, I'll just try it. But for me, I'm terrified of bugs, so that was way outside of the box for me. I've gone really rogue. I've done, you know, I, I, bulls balls. Um, I've done I, those. That's nothing. Oh, I, I just think it sounds funny. Um, <laughs> I've done a lot of shellfish, uh, you know, I, I've done little shrimps while they're alive. They move and you're, you have to eat them while they're like wow. walking around. Like, How little. do you catch them? They're kind of like beaten up already, so they're like <laughs> drugged. So you just eat the back of them. You're literally eating them while they're alive, which is pretty intense. Um, I'm willing to do, do anything. I've eaten a, you know, I've, I've eaten a have, frog. Have you done the eye? The eyeball situation? Absolutely. The eyeballs, my, uh, we do this. You suck it. I, I love eyeballs. I'll eat uh, I literally am not scared of anything. I, I love would tongue. Beef tongue is delicious. Beef tongue is is like a standard. In in Russian cuisine, beef tongue is like fries in America. I ate like eight hundred beef tongues Why do you think before I ever had a, like a McDonald's burger. And it's so fatty, and you know R- Russian mm-hmm. people are very slim. Why do you think that? Well, it? they drink so much vodka that it cleanses. <laughs> their Thanks for being on the show. Thank you so much. Ma, you got all the link ups. You'll link it all up. You, with a little bit of me, we're changing the wine world.